Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to be looking at the dark room bottom panel. We've looked at the interface before and you can check the previous uh, videos in the playlist but there has been lots of changes recently or at least in the last two versions so it's good to go through it again. Alright so we're gonna start from the left and the first one is presets. We can have quick access to presets here. The ones that we use maybe more often. Let's say I'm going to add this. And whatever, well, the sharpen. Now when I click on this, I have the ones that I chosen. All right, no idea why. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. Those were are the ones from the color calibration here and since I already have to this is an old photo that we've used for a previous video so I didn't remember that we have to here you can apply it either on the first one or on the second well you know on the one without a number one or on the one with the number one that's why it's probably a good idea to rename them this way here it will be easy to see where you'd be applying it all right next one the next one is styles and it gives you quick access to your styles styles if you remember we can either download them or create them ourselves well, I don't have any now I'm gonna go into light table I'm going to use the styles module and create one from what we've done in this what I've done previously in this image and I'm gonna call it test save it and now if we go back to darkroom I should have a style here that says test and you can apply it quickly on other photos the third one here creates a second darkroom image which is useless here but uh, if you have two screens for instance then you can create two Dark, uh, dark room image windows and you can maybe have a duplicate and then compare them or work on them in tandem all right let's move to the right side now I'll continue from left though the first one is focus peaking and focus peaking shows you which part of the image are in focus well it's actually showing you where the sharp edges are but that's usually where the focus is if you're uh, sharp eyed get it get it if you can see here that there are three colors the yellow which is the very sharp edges the green if you could see it somewhere here for instance this is green this is the reasonably sharp edge and blue which is a slightly sharp edge next we have the color assessment and as you can see this one creates well it zooms out and adds a white border it's recommended as well that you use it against a gray background which is I think the default now but if it's not you can always set choose one of the gray set, uh, well one of the gray color schemes and we use this one to actually help us assess by eye the saturation and brightness of the image because if you're well if you're actually um, working on a black background for instance if this is the image was completely full here then you were basically working against a almost black background and that can distort how we see the image so we might perceive it as more as brighter than it actually is or we can see it with that it has that can appear to have less saturation or vice versa and which means that when you print it out or you use it on another device it will be too dark or too bright or too saturated what have you next we have the row overexposed warning 
and this one highlights the areas of the image where color channels of the row input file are clipped. I don't have any in this, it's a pretty dark image, so I can't see any. Right clicking on it will give you some options. You can change the color scheme, you can change how the uh, overexposed parts of the image are highlighted and you have the, clip the clipping threshold. That's the value that's considered overexposed. One is safe, it's the normal, but I can maybe lower it here just to show how the module work. So now it's highlighting everything that's above this value. You can see it here a bit. Well, okay, lower it so that, yeah. So this is now considered overexposed. That's not true. I lowered the threshold way too low, but now we can play around with it and you can see what that does. So the CFA color is a pattern that's uh, red from the primary colors, red, green, and blue, which indicates w which colors are clipped. So you, you know, it's not just a random pattern, but it will indicate which colors are clipped. Then you have a solid color, just that's the color here that we've selected. But then all of the clipped colors will be displayed with the same color. And then false color which sets the color channels to zero in the affected areas. The next button is the clipping warning. And this one highlights the areas of the image that may exhibit luminance or gamut clipping, which means that for the display device, it will show you where which part of the image things are outside of the device's capabilities to display, whether that is from luminance perspective or gamut perspective, so colors. Colors on a device are displayed according to a gamut of colors that the device is capable of displaying. If the image has a color that's outside of that gamut, it's going to be clipped and will not be displayed on the device. And the same applies for luminance and that's what you can see using this button. The main difference to keep in mind between the um, clipping indicator here and the row overexposed indication is the row is in the input file and this one is after the processing that we've done. Now right clicking gives us a list of options. The first one is the clipping preview mode the default is full gamut, which will show a combination of all of the other options. So I'll start with the other options first. The any RGB channel, and that shows it the indication of where there is a overclipping of any of the three RGB channels. Either they're overexposed, so outside over the maximum value, or too dark and they're forced to black and they're under the minimum value in the histogram. The next one is luminance and this one shows any pixels that are clipped because their luminance falls outside of the range again overexposed or underexposed well, not exposed but you know what I mean over the threshold upper threshold and the lower threshold and then saturation which shows oversaturated colors that have been pushed outside of the permitted range of the histogram color space and like we said the full gamut is just a combination of all three and then you have the color scheme which is for the upper and lower values and you have three options self-explanatory I guess then you have the lower threshold and the upper thresholds 
and you can use those to set the indicator based on your desired output medium so if you're going to print you check your paper that you're going to be using and you can see what it's for instance its capabilities with the printer and see how much they can print there is a small list in the dark table manual but I guess you can find these values either on the manufacturer websites or online and you can change them to correspond to your output medium all right next we have the soft proof which allows you to view the image as rendered as it would be using the selected color profile so for instance you can use to soft proof it on a color profile of your printer or of another screen or if you're using if you if you want to actually export it for the to do for the web then you might use srgb while if you were working on another color profile and you get the options are by right clicking the first one is the display profile and it's either the system or you can choose whatever fits and that's the uh, color profile of the display a system display profile is probably good enough unless you know what it should be and well it's better to actually if you're going to uh, change this to profile your monitor and change the system display profile as opposed to just messing around here then you have the preview display profile and uh, that's you set the color of the preview image if we had a second window we don't then the soft proof profile like we said you can choose any one or if you had one specifically for your printer for instance well, choose others just to show the point if you notice the histogram is changing and that's because the gamut supported by the profile is different and then you have the histogram profile which is the color profile of the histogram and honestly I'm here a little bit lost the user manual does not explain why we would need a different profile for the histogram I presume they're talking about here however it says that none of the available options are ideal so system display profile is probably the least bad setting okay keep it on system display profile and next we have the gamut checking and that's pretty much more or less the same as what we get from the clipping warning and I am not sure why this one is still here even the fine manual says that um, yeah it provides information about clipping it's the same as the ones we get from the full gamut but it uses a external library the little CMS library okay it even has downsides because you can't it's only gamut you can't use it with gamut and luminance and it's much slower okay long story short I don't see why we should use this and last but not least is the guidelines and that's probably the one that you've used the most because then now we're gonna get global guide overlays and you can use that all through your image for cropping rotating or even just to keep it there to know where all parts of your image are if you're actually editing parts separately and right clicking gives you the options you can choose different kind of grids and of course if you choose something else then you might get more options here is how many lines you have in each and how many subdivisions and of course you can change that if you want to rule of thirds is very common diagonal is quite interesting as well golden sections and do we have spirals of course we have spirals and you can flip them of course and then you have the color of the line if it's not visible on your current image you can change the color and that's it we've gone through them all 
I hope that you found this uh, video interesting and entertaining. If you have any questions, remarks or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.